In our lives as human persons, there is no greater challenge and no greater difficulty than facing the reality of death. It doesn't matter if you're a God-fearing Christian or a hard-hearted atheist. All of us will face death. Death is seemingly the final and most certain thing of our existence. Death befuddles us. We're afraid of it. You see, we don't know how to handle death. And in my ministry as a priest, it's the hardest thing to minister to people during a time of great loss because everybody wants answers and it's humbling for me to know that I don't have any. And that I can't do anything or say anything necessarily that's going to make everything better or make it all go away. Faced with death, we face one reality, powerlessness. When we face the reality of death, we all feel exactly the same, powerless. We can deal with suffering. We might be able to put off death for a little while, but when death comes, and it will, we feel powerless. And Jesus Christ, true God and true man, is the only one who can deal with death, who can handle death, and in fact, do much more. God comes to give us new life. God wants us to know that in the face of death, when we feel powerless, that God is powerful in the face of death. And he begins to reveal this truth to us in the Old Testament. In the first reading today from the prophet Ezekiel, he's the prophet who wandered with the Israelites during the Babylonian exile when they were exiled from Jerusalem. And they spent many, many, many years, centuries, away from their homeland. People were dying in exile. And they really began to believe that the promises of the Messiah and to being restored as a nation were never going to be fulfilled. And so Ezekiel is the prophet who's with them in this time of exile, and he has different visions. And one of the visions is the one we get in chapter 37. And we just heard a small part of 37 today, the great promise of the Lord that I will open your graves and have you rise from them, says the Lord. But where is this coming from? It comes from this vision in Ezekiel, the vision of the valley of dry bones. It reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me, says Ezekiel, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many upon the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And again I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. Behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And as I looked, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no spirit in them. Then he said to me, prophesy the spirit. Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O Spirit, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and the Spirit came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great host. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, we are cut off. Therefore I prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will place you in your own land, and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken 
I have done it and have promised it, says the Lord. So this is the context of that reading from Ezekiel, that God has absolute power over death. His power over death is absolute, but he seems to exercise it in a strange way. Because we hear and witness the power of God over death in the Gospel of John, in the very familiar account of the raising of Lazarus. And what does Jesus do in this account to show forth his power? It's strange and mysterious. First, he hears that a very close friend, Lazarus, is ill. And what does Jesus do? Nothing. He stays where he is for two more days. He does nothing. He lets Lazarus die. And then he gathers up his apostles and says, we're going back to Judah. I'm going to awaken Lazarus. He's merely sleeping. Jesus begins to reveal right away that in the eyes of God, death is merely sleep from which he can awaken any bodily death. And Jesus approaches the town and Martha runs out to him. What does she say? Well, we all would say, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. That's absolutely correct. She knows already that Jesus has power. She knows that if Jesus was physically there, that Lazarus would have been saved. He could have been healed. Jesus didn't do anything. But her faith deepens. She begins to say, but I know whatever you ask, of the Father, he will give you. And she eventually says, I know that you are the Christ, the one coming into the world. The final sign of the Messiah was to raise the dead, just like we hear in Ezekiel. The final sign of the Messiah was he would bring people back from the dead. He would open tombs and people would come out. This would be the final sign of the Messiah. Mary The other sister comes and she says the same thing to Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Do we not hear the depth of human anguish in those questionings? When we or those we love are faced with the reality of death, the death of a loved one, a child, a spouse, a parent, a grandparent, a dear friend, we've all said, we're Were you? Why did this happen? But you know, I think we repress our anguish. And we're afraid to really lament and weep before the Lord. And to show us that that's the first thing that we're absolutely supposed to do, Jesus weeps. Jesus delivers up his friends to the sorrow of death. He lets his friend die And Jesus allows his interior soul and heart to be ripped apart with anguish and grief in the face of death. Jesus allows himself and those he loves to experience the great sorrow and pain of loss. And so often in our Christian lives, we can think that it's not appropriate to lament. That maybe Jesus should have showed up and just said, Why is everybody crying? Lazarus is in a better place. But he doesn't say that. He says nothing. He weeps. Because the first stage in showing his power over death is that he wants us to embrace the sorrow first. That in the midst of the sorrow of loss, he begins to strengthen our faith by first being with us in that deep place of pain and sorrow and loss. And then his power emerges. Jesus is perturbed. He's angry, annoyed. He doesn't like what death has done to his friend. 
and the anguish that he's seeing in Martha and Mary and the Jews that are crying and weeping, he's perturbed. He doesn't like this. He doesn't like what it does to us. And so now he's ready to face off with death. And he says, take away the stone. Lazarus, come out. Three words, and he lives. He rises. He comes out. That the word of God has absolute power over everything, including death. And God says, let there be light, and there's light. God says that there be waters and stars in the sky, and it happens. God says, rise and walk, and it happens. God says, this is my body and my blood. It happens. God's word, absolute power, even in the face of death, especially in the face of death. Lazarus lives. Four days he's in the tomb just to make sure that no one's confused about him really being dead. Go back to the graveside of a loved one after you've buried him for four days. No one's arguing at that point whether they're really dead. He was dead. And Jesus brought him back to life to point to his power over, the re- over death. Lazarus is not resurrected, though. This isn't a resurrection. Jesus will do that in two weeks on Easter Sunday. But it's a sign that points to what will happen at the resurrection, that at the voice of God, all the dead will rise. New life will be given. The righteous to heavenly glory, the unrighteous to eternal fire. But all will rise. And so, my brothers and sisters, make no mistake that the point and the greatest test of our faith is always going to be in the face of death. And when we face death, he's either God of the living or he's nothing. If he's just supposed to be here to make everything better and to keep everybody that I love from dying, then we misunderstand him. He defeats death by accepting it. And he transforms it. This is Jesus' power. Absolute power over death. And so where in our lives, my brothers and sisters, have we faced death? Where have we faced hopelessness? Where have we faced unbelief and doubt? These are the places in our lives where the Son of God wants to stand and say, come out, rise up, receive new life. We need to have our faith deepened and revived by the word of God. Where have we experienced loss, grief? It doesn't have to be the death of a loved one. It can be the loss of a relationship. It can be the loss of faith. It can be living in utter discouragement and hopelessness that time and again, life just seemingly continues to get worse. And we still say with Mary and Martha, where are you? If you had been here, these tragic things wouldn't have happened. We need to be okay, my brothers and sisters, going to our Father and lamenting and weeping before him. Do you see a a parent when a little child is throwing a tantrum, pounding on his dad's chest? The dad's fine. And we need to do that sometimes. Maybe we need to go to our Heavenly Father and pound on his chest like little children with our grief and our sorrow and let it out. Because in that moment, he begins to heal us. He begins to awaken us that he's with us in that pain. That I am here with you. I am weeping with you. I am in your sorrow. I am with you in your loss. And that the day will come. The day will absolutely come. The Lord has promised it. The day will come when He will say the word and all will rise again. Every grave on every place on this planet will open up. He is the Lord of life, not of death. God's power over death is absolute. He comes to give us new life. So let's pray for those words of new life to take root in us today 
to give us and revive us in the places that have gone dead in our hearts, in our lives, that only Jesus, only Jesus can bring the dead back to life. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.